In this video, I'm gonna show you how to write a blog post that gets hundreds of comments, thousands of social shares, and first page Google rankings. In fact, I use the exact process in this video to grow my blog to 426,496 visits per month. I'm Brian Dean, the founder of Backlinko, the place where marketers turn for higher rankings and more traffic. Keep watching. Let's face it, getting traffic to your blog is harder than ever. In fact, I recently teamed up with BuzzSumo to analyze 912 million blog posts. And we found that the vast majority of blog posts that are published got zero links or social shares. When I launched my first blog way back in 2009, things were completely different. Back then, getting links and social shares was relatively easy. You could publish a 500 word blog post and call it a day. 498 words, 499 words, 500 words. Dunsky. Flash forward to today and things are completely different. According to WordPress, 2.3 million blog posts come out on their platform every day. So for your content to stand out and get shared today, it needs to be amazing. Lucky for you, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video, step by step. Starting with step number one, find a proven blog post topic. It's no secret that your blog post topic is huge. Here's exactly how to find blog post topics that actually work. First, head over to Udemy. Udemy is a blog post topic goldmine. Here's why. Udemy doesn't just show you content that people are interested in. Instead, you see content that people are actually paying for. You can search for courses by category or by keyword. Either way, you'll find content that people are actually paying to access. For example, let's say you run a blog about graphic design. Well, head over to the design category in Udemy and scroll down to their best-selling courses. And within five seconds, you have a list of proven topics. Very cool. The next place to look for proven topic ideas is Amazon. To use it, just search on Amazon with the keyword that describes what your blog is all about. Then look for a book on that topic with lots of ratings. This shows you that people actually bought the book. Finally, click look inside to see the table of contents. And just like with Udemy, you get a list of topics presented to you on a silver platter. Last up, we have conference agendas. First, head over to a conference website in your niche, go to the agenda or schedule page, and you'll see topics that people are paying to learn more about. Which leads us to step number two, write your headline. Now that you have a proven topic, it's time to write your blog post headline. You might've seen the stat before that 80% of people read your headline, but only 20% click over to the actual post. Is that stat true? Who knows? But I do know that your headline is super important. With that, here's exactly how to write blog post headlines that stand out and get clicks. First, start your headline off with proven phrases. BuzzSumo recently analyzed about 100 million headlines. So what did they find? That headlines that start with these 20 words and phrases get the most shares on social media. For example, when I published this post on my blog, I made sure to start my headline off with one of those phrases. Obviously, you don't need to start every single headline off with one of those phrases. But when it makes sense, try and use them. Second, make sure that your title uses brackets or parentheses. A study by Outbrain found that adding brackets to headlines can improve click-through rate by up to 38%. And this study confirms what I've seen in the real world. In fact, six of my top 10 all-time most popular blog posts have brackets or parentheses in the title. Finally, you wanna use long headlines. That study of 900 million blog posts that I mentioned earlier found that posts with long headlines got 76% more shares compared to posts that used short headlines. With that, it's time for step number three, write an attention-grabbing introduction. Topic, check. Headline, check. Now it's time to write an introduction that grabs your reader's attention right off the bat. How? The PPT formula. This formula is killing it for me right now. By the way, the PPT stands for Preview Proof Transition. Here's a breakdown of the formula. Now I'm gonna break down each part of this formula and show you how it works with real life examples. First up, you have the preview. This part couldn't be any more simple. Just let your reader know exactly 
what to expect. That way, when someone lands on one of your blog posts, they know that they're in the right place. Here's an example. Next, it's time for the proof. Here's where you show people that you know what you're talking about. Now, what if you don't know what you're talking about? Well, you got bigger problems than blog post introductions, but that's another story. Now, you can show proof with personal results, years of experience, number of clients, credentials or certifications, or anything that shows that someone should listen to your advice. Here's an example. Last up, we have the transition. Cap your intro off with a transition, a transition that pushes your reader to keep reading. For example, you can see that I use the phrase, let's dive right in at the end of this intro. Simple. Moving right along to step number four, write an awesome post. Is there a formula for writing blog posts that people will link to and share? No. If there was, everyone would use it. That said, there are proven strategies that you can use to make your content 10 times better. For example, one technique that's working really well for me right now is using lots of section subheaders. Subheaders are great because they break your content up into easy to read chunks, which is super important if you publish a lot of long form content like I do. For example, this post from my blog is super long. In fact, that post is 4,300 words. So I broke up the content into little chunks using dozens of subheaders. I also recommend using lots of visuals in every post that you publish. Now, when I'm talking about visuals, I'm talking about things like screenshots, charts, pictures, infographics. Basically, don't be afraid to use a ton of different visuals and just lots of visuals in general in every post. For example, this post from my blog has 95 visuals. Next, use a font that's between 16 in 20 pixels. If you've ever read anything at medium.com, you've probably noticed that their articles are super easy to read. How do they do it? Well, besides a clean layout, they use 21 point font. And if you're using anything less than 16, you're probably missing out on a lot of readers. That's why we use 18 point font here at Backlinko. Finally, when it makes sense, publish content that's at least 3000 words. Our BuzzSumo industry study found a clear correlation between long form content and social shares. In fact, our data showed that long form content got an average of 77% more social shares compared to traditional short blog posts. Obviously, this doesn't mean that you need to pad your blog posts with a bunch of fluff or filler. But if it does make sense to publish a long form blog post or guide, go for it. So now that your post is in the books, it's time for the next step, step number five, write your conclusion. Here's the deal. Most people use throwaway conclusions like this, but professional bloggers know that your conclusion is super important, especially if you wanna get lots of comments on your blog. Well, I recently developed a three-step process for writing awesome conclusions. It's called the TAC process. Here's how it looks. First, start your conclusion off with a transition. This sentence lets people know that the meat of your blog post is over and it's time to sum things up. Here's an example. Next, it's time for the ask. Here's where you ask your reader a very specific question. In other words, you don't wanna ask something vague like, what do you think? Instead, give your reader an insanely simple question that's easy to answer. For example, in this conclusion, you can see that I ask people something that'll take like two seconds to answer. And you wanna end your conclusion with a CTA. Your CTA can be whatever you want your reader to do next. You can ask your readers to leave a comment, share on social media, sign up for your newsletter, subscribe to your YouTube channel. The exact call to action that you use is totally up to you. But the important thing to keep in mind here is that you got someone to read your blog post all the way to the end, which means they really enjoyed your content and they're ready for the next step. And as long as you give them that next step in your conclusion, you're good. With your conclusion in the books, let's head over to step number six, optimize your post for SEO. Obviously, there's a lot more to SEO than I could cover in a short video. In fact, I have an entire blog and YouTube channel about SEO. That said, SEO is super important for your blog posts long-term success. So I do wanna quickly cover three simple techniques that you can use to optimize your blog posts for SEO. Because the truth is, traffic to most people's blog posts look like this. A huge spike on day one, then it flattens out to pretty much zero. But when you optimize your post the right way, you still get that spike, but your post still brings in consistent traffic month after month. For example, I first published this post over five 
years ago. Now I've updated it a few times since then, but it's basically the same post. And because that post is optimized for SEO, it still brings in over 12,000 visitors per month from Google. So the first on-page SEO technique is to include your target keyword in your introduction. Google and other search engines put more weight on words and phrases that show up at the top of your page. So you wanna make sure to use your keyword once in your blog post intro like this. Next, use short URLs. When it comes to Google rankings, there's no doubt about it. Short URLs work best. In fact, Google themselves actually recommend that you use short descriptive URLs. That's because short URLs make it easy for Google to understand the topic of your page. Plus, people use your URL to figure out which result they should click on, which is why lots of industry studies have found that short URLs get clicked on more than long URLs. Finally, add internal links to your post. Now, internal linking doesn't have to be complicated. In fact, when it comes to internal links, I like to keep things simple. Whenever I publish a new post, I add two to five internal links to some of my older posts. Now, you can also go back to older posts and link to the new post that you just published. For example, when I published this post about keyword research, I linked out to related content on my site that I already published and added a handful of internal links from older posts to my new guide. And before we end this video, I have a quick bonus step for you promote your post. I know this video is designed to show you how to write a blog post, but here's the deal. Most blog posts, even good ones, fail because they're not promoted enough. And no, sharing your content on Twitter and Facebook doesn't really count as promotion. To get your content seen today, you need to do a lot more than just share it on social media. In fact, I usually spend about 20% of my time writing content and 80% of my time promoting that content. That's how important content promotion is. With that, here are three quick content promotion strategies that you can try. Our first strategy is the content announcement newsletter. When it comes to content promotion, email crushes social media, and it's not even that close. For example, I published this post on my blog a few months ago, and like I do for all new posts, I sent out a tweet. I also sent out this simple, plain text announcement newsletter to my email subscribers. And when it was all said and done, the newsletter got nearly 13 times more clicks than my tweet. To be clear, I do have more email subscribers than Twitter followers. But still, there's no denying that email is way more powerful when it comes to promoting content compared to social media. Next, we have Facebook retargeting. It's no secret that Facebook's organic reach is pretty much zero right now. Fortunately, you can still get your Facebook followers to see your posts without paying a fortune. The secret is to boost your posts, but only boost to people that have visited your site. In other words, retargeting. For example, I paid about 50 cents per click on this boosted Facebook post, which is dirt cheap considering that I'm in the competitive, expensive B2B niche. Finally, we have email outreach. If you don't have an email list yet, outreach is probably the best way to promote your content. That's the good news. The bad news is you can't just send the same spammy email to 100 people and expect it to work. In fact, I get generic emails like this all the time. You probably do too. And I delete them within two seconds. But I don't automatically delete every outreach email that I get. If someone takes the time to send me a personalized message, I'll usually at least check out their post. And if the post is something that I think the Backlinko community would enjoy, I'll share it. So there you have it, my seven step process for writing a blog post. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. And if you want exclusive SEO techniques that I only share with email subscribers, head over to backlinko.com and sign up for the newsletter. It's free. Now I wanna hear from you. Which strategy from this video are you gonna try first? Are you gonna promote your content with email outreach or try using shorter blog post URLs? Let me know by leaving a comment below right now. When if you hear that beeping, I'm blowing your ears out. Finally, <clears throat> testing, testing. With that, oh, okay, okay. Next, use. Okay, I'll try another take of that. <laughs>